so in the last video we are discussed about uh, web service architecture here so now again we will discuss some high level points from the web service architecture so now here as we discussed um, in, in the previous video so now this is your web service here this is your web service here and this is your client application here this is your client application here so assuming here i want to develop this web services using java language here so assuming here i have one system one on top of the system one maybe one web server is running or application service running here so on top of this we need to create one web application here in this web application we need to create your service class here which is invoked by your client here so here i am writing one service class called cal service dot java here and inside this we have one method called public int method name is add int i comma into j here just we are returning i plus j here so now here inside this web application as we discussed here is we will have one skeleton skeleton is a one predefined class here it's a one predefined predefined class here predefined class here so we will discuss later about this skeleton also here fine so one skeleton is running here on top of the skeleton your service class is running here so now my web service development is done my web service development is done so what we discussed so far here is what we what are the steps we followed so far here just i have one system on top of the system i have one server here so on top of the server i have created one web application here in this web application i have some cal service dot java here and this is the skeleton here this skeleton we need to configure in the web dot to xml file here we need to configure the web dot xml file here so after creating after deploying this service class what we need to do is we need to share we need to generate the visual file that visual file we need to share it to the client so that client can understand about your service here now how service provider will generate this visual file service provider will use visual generation tool visual generation tool by using the visual generation tool service provider will generate this visual file here so now here in this now this visual file needs to share by the client here so how service provider will share this visual file to the client here so either he will send the visual file through an email attachment or he will store this visual file into the udi registry software here with some unique name so this is your visual and for this you are given one unique name here so that unique name that unique name service provider will share to the client here client here so now here in instead of sharing in instead of storing visual file into the udd registry we can also directly share the visual file to the client through an email attachment here so now i can say that udi uddi registry is an optional software in web service architecture here why instead of sharing the visual file instead of putting the visual file into the udi registry for the client we can directly share this visual file to the client through an email attachment here now the question is when we will go for when we will use udi registry and when we can directly share the visual file through an email attachment here so now here if we have one to one communication or one to two communication or one to three communication meaning what we have one service we have maybe three clients are there here so now here to share your visual file to the three clients we can directly share this visual file through an email attachment here is in instead of uh, storing this visual file into the udi registry here so now here if you want to store your visual file into the registry again you should have one system on top of the system you need to install the udi registry software here then you need to store your uh, visual file onto this udi registry here so in instead of doing all these steps here i can directly share this visual file to the client through an email attachment here then when we can go for the udi registry here so if you are web services accessed by the some thousands of so thousands of clients or hundreds of clients so you need to share this visual file to the hundreds of clients and thousands of clients here so it is impossible to share through an email attachment to share your visual file to the hundreds of clients or 
thousands of clients here so that time you need to store your visitor file into the udr registry so that the lakhs of people are thousands of clients or uh, hundreds of clients will get the visitor file from the udi registry here so what i'm trying to say is if your service is invoked by the hundreds of clients then need to store that visitor file into the udi registry here otherwise just you can maybe one or two clients are there directly we can share the visitor file to the client through an email attachment here so now here in the first step service provider will generate the visitor file using visitor generation tool what is the input for the visitor generation tool service class is the visitor service class is the input for the visitor generation tool here and then in the second step we will store this visitor file into the udr registry with some unique name now the service provider will share this visitor unique name to this client here now client having this unique name unique name and he will interact with this udr registry software by sending that unique name and in the fourth step he will get the visitor file here so client will get this visitor file from the udr registry or client will download the visitor file from the email also email also here so finally client having this visitor file from this visitor file he will use some stub generation tool using the stub generation tool he will generates the stub here so what is the behavior of the stub here what is the behavior of the stub here so now here if this client application is c++ application stub should be the c++ class here it's a generated class here if it is c sharp stub should be the c++ class here and if it is c sharp stub should be the c sharp if it is java class stub should be the java class here so this stub is depends on this client to application here so and the next property about this stub here whatever methods we have in this service class the same methods will be available in the stub here so now we have one question how stub contains that service class method who generated this stub here is stub generation tool how stub generation tool knows whatever the methods we have in the cal service because already that class details are available in the visitor file so that from this visitor file it is generating the stub so that whatever methods we have in the visitor file the same methods will be available in the stub also here so now here we have something called public int method name is add here int i comma into j here int i comma into j here but don't expected whatever the implementation we have here the don't expect the same method implementation here here we have the different to implementation here so after generating this stub by the stub generation tool by the client client in the client application client will create that stub object here on top of the stub object he will invokes that method here add method whatever the method he wants to invoke from the service class the same method will be invoked by the client on this stub object here so as we know that in our case client application is c++ here stub is a c++ here so c++ class can create the c++ class object here so if it is java stub is a java file and the java class can create the java object here so now finally we created stub object here on top of the stub object we are invoking this add method by passing the 10 comma 10 here actually this add method needs to be invoked on to this cal service here who will do that job we will discuss now here now stub will receive that method call method call and it will store that method call details on to this soap request here it's an xml document here the soap request is an xml document here in this soap request we have name of the method which method we want to invoke here that method and parameter values and parameter types also here so this method this soap request needs to be sent to the service location here so who will do that job http protocol will do that job here 
So HTTP protocol is a transportation protocol. It will move something from one location to the another location. In our web service architecture, HTTP protocol will move the SOAP request from client location to the service location here. That is the eighth step here. Now this SOAP request will hand over to this, hand over by this server here. Now the server will hand over that SOAP request to this skeleton here. Now skeleton will read the method details, client requested method details from this SOAP request. Now skeleton having the method name add parameter values 10 comma 10 and parameter types are int comma int here. Now skeleton can understand that what method we need to invoke on the service class here. This method is trying to invoke by the client so that client skeleton will do that job here. Instead of directly invoke the method on the service class by the client, the here skeleton will do that job here. Skeleton will have the name of the method, parameter values and parameter types here. Now skeleton is a Java class here. It's a predefined class here. Why we can say that it's a Java class? Now this application, this web service is developed by using Java language so that skeleton should be the Java here. If it is C sharp, skeleton should be the C++ class here. Now skeleton is a Java class. It is also Java class. So that skeleton will create this object. So on top of this object, it will invoke the add method of int comma int by passing the 10, 10, val 10 comma 10 values here. So finally, in the 12th step, it will get that 20 as a return value from the service class. That 20 value needs to be sent to the client here. So now here, this skeleton will store this 20 value in the 13th step into the SOAP response. Now the SOAP response will move from service location to the client to location here. Again, who will do that job here is HTTP protocol will do that job here. Now the SOAP response will read by the stub here. Stub will get this return value here return value, that return value will be assigned to this variable here, will be assigned to this variable that is in the 16th step here. So this is the way we have communication between the two different applications using web service here. So here, what are the main points we need to remember here is, one is we need to remember visual file and the next one is the UDDI registry. Next one is stub stub next one is soap request here http protocol and then skeleton here and then soap response again http protocol here so if we observe if we observe here mainly we can find six components in this web service architecture here this six components are recommended by the web service here to share information between the two interoperable applications here. What are the six components? One is visual, second one is the UDDI registry, third one is the stub generation tool, fourth one is the stub, fifth one is the SOAP, sixth one is the HTTP protocol here and the last one is the skeleton also here. So if we have these components, we can easily communicate between the two interoperable applications here. Now the question is, now the question is, who will give this visual generation tool? Who will give this skeleton here? So without visual generation tool and skeleton, maybe we cannot develop the web services. Maybe your web services cannot be invoked by the client here. Why? Because if you don't imagine, if you don't have the visual generation tool, maybe you cannot generate the visual file here. If you don't have the skeleton in your web service here, who will read the SOAP request? Who will invoke the client requested method on the service class? And who will prepare the SOAP response here? So meaning what? If we don't have the skeleton and if we don't have the visual generation tool, maybe we cannot develop this web services here. So who will give this? Who will give this visual generation tool and the skeleton here? Sir, I want to develop this web services using Java language, using 
Java language. So Java language is given by the Sun Microsystem. So that Sun Microsystem should have the responsibility to provide visual generation tool and the skeleton here because we are developing this web services using Java language here. No, I want to develop this web services using any one of the Microsoft technologies here. So that Microsoft should provide this visual generation tool and the skeleton here. No, I am developing this web services using PHP here. So the PHP should provide this visual generation tool and the skeleton here. So here we are Java developers here. We are Java developers here. So Sun Microsystem should provide. We are Java developers. We want to develop this web services using Java language. So that Sun Microsystem should provide digital generation tool and the skeleton here. So what is this? These are the predefined classes here. These two are the predefined classes here. These two are the predefined classes here. Predefined classes here. So if these two classes are given by the Sun Microsystem, so these cla two classes are the Java files here, Java classes here. If these two classes are given by the Microsoft, these two classes are the Microsoft classes here. If it is PHP, these two classes are the PHP classes here. Now coming to the client here, coming to the client here. Sometimes we have the requirement, we need to develop the client application here. To develop the client application, what is the require what is mainly we need here is stub here actually stub is not a predefined class you cannot directly use that here is you need to generate from the visual file here to generate the stub from the visual file we require the visual generation tool here here visual generation tool is a predefined class here visual generation tool is a predefined class here predefined class here so if this client application developed by using c++ this stub generation tool should be the C++ class. So that stub generation tool will generate the stub in the form of C++ only here. Meaning what stub should be the C++ class here. If it is Java, if the client application is Java, stub generation tool should be the Java class here. That stub generation tool will generate the stub in the form of the Java here. Then who is provide this top generation tool here? Now here I am developing the client application using C++. So C++ should be provide this predefined class here. If it is Java, Java should Sun Microsystem should provide this top generation tool here. So meaning what? We are Java developers. Maybe we can develop the web services using Java language. Maybe we can develop the web service client using Java language here. If you are developing the web services using Java language, you require visual generation tool and the skeleton here. If you develop the web service client, you require the stub generation tool here. As we discussed here is these tools, these stub generation tool, visual generation tool and skeleton should be provided by the Sun Micro system here. That classes are called as a, we can say that Java web service APIs here. Java web service APIs here. So Sun has provided four APIs here. Sun has provided four APIs here. One is JAX RPC. Next one is the JAX WS, JAX M, last one is the JAX RS here. So now we will going to discuss about this Java Web Service APIs here. So make sure that the skeleton, skeleton visual generation tool should be provided by the Java and the client side stop generation tool should be provided by the Sun Microsystem here. How they are provided in the form of the web service APIs here. So how many Java web service APIs we have here is four Java web service APIs we have in our, in our architecture. 